Major funding for Odyssey was provided by the National Endowment for the Humanities. Additional funding was provided by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting and the Polaroid Corporation. Lost for centuries in the jungles of Central America, the remains of a magnificent civilization, the Maya. Tikal in Guatemala, known for its great temple pyramids. Palenque in Mexico with its elegant palaces. As tourists wander through deserted rooms and plazas, archaeologists are uncovering the Mayan past. At the ancient city of La Manai in Belize. On a lake near Tikal in Guatemala. In Mexico, where Mayan agriculture is being reconstructed. The forgotten Mayan rulers are being brought to life and their secret rituals revealed. This is Merida, capital of the state of Yucatan in Mexico. Recuerda a tu hijo. The Spanish founded the cathedral 450 years ago. But the descendants of the great Mayan pyramid builders are still here. Over the Yucatan, Mayan village life continues much as it has for 3,000 years. <laughs> Unlike the Aztecs and the Incas, these people had no gold, so the Spanish soon lost interest in their Mayan subjects. But one of the conquerors, Diego de Landa, third bishop of Merida, did study the Maya and marveled at their achievements. If Yucatan were to gain a name and reputation from the multitude, the grandeur, and the beauty of its buildings, as other regions of the Indies have obtained these by gold, silver, and riches, its glory would have spread like that of Peru and New Spain. Mayan glory began to spread only in the 1840s after the American explorer John Lloyd Stevens, accompanied by the English artist Frederick Catherwood, published an account of their pioneering journey of discovery to the ruined sites.
Catherwood's romantic illustrations of the palaces and monuments astonished readers in Europe and America. The Mayan ruins were spread throughout a vast area, located in what's now known as Central America. Covering parts of five countries today, the Mayan region ran the full length of the Yucatan Peninsula. Roughly in the center were the great pyramids of Tikal, and to the west, the palaces of Palenque. In the latter half of the 19th century, intensive study of the ruins began. The English archaeologist Alfred Maudsley traveled from ruin to ruin, clearing the forest cover and using the newly invented camera to record the results. Chichen Itza, in the far north of the Yucatan Peninsula. Tikal in Guatemala. Copan in Honduras. By the turn of the century, a few of the strange hieroglyphics had been deciphered using keys from Bishop Landa's writings. They all seemed to be dates and numbers. This breakthrough led to the theory that the Maya were time worshippers, an idea that was to preoccupy archaeologists for 50 years. At Tikal, archaeologist Chris Jones. Well, this monument was one of the more convincing ones uh, that the early Mayanists used to support their theory that uh, the Maya worship time and were not very interested in the um, worldly events of history. This glyph here records nine periods with four dots and one bar of 400 years each. In this particular monument, they went far beyond that, you see, and recorded uh, 19 periods of 8,000 years 11 periods of 20 times 8,000 years, plus two periods of 20 times the previous number. This gets into the millions of years. They were able to point to this monument and say, uh, time must be extremely important to these people for them to spend uh, so much energy carving it on the sides of their monuments. A strange picture of the Maya came to be accepted. Devoted priests living in small dark palace rooms, worshipping time, indulging in mathematical rituals, perhaps connected in some way with the temple pyramids. There were just two social classes, it was thought. A faithful peasantry living out in the jungle, supporting the priestly elite in the center. This view was to last until the 1950s, when a comprehensive archaeological project began at Tikal. Chris Jones took part. Instead of concentrating just on the elite, we realized that we would get nowhere in understanding those elite until we understood the support population around them. So we started mapping right away. Out of it, we produced a huge map covering uh, 12 square kilometers around the center of the site, mapping every little mound. From that, we found that our concepts of, of Maya city were very wrong. It had been a huge community, perhaps 100,000 people at AD 800, twice the size of Rome at that time. As well as mapping, the archaeologist carried out thorough excavations. Chris Jones uncovered a complex of buildings that from its similarity to Aztec designs was probably a marketplace. Tikal began to emerge as a normal, busy and rich ancient city. There was a variety of house sizes, suggesting a spectrum of social classes. Not just peasants and elite, but artisans, merchants, administrators as well. And the mysterious temple pyramids? Inside they found the tombs of kings.
The most famous Maya tomb was only discovered in 1962, inside this building at Palenque.